There I was, standing in front of the mirror, hardly recognizing the person staring back at me. My name's Luke, a pretty average guy, you might say. Reserved, a bit shy, and certainly not the type you'd find in the center of attention. But today, I was far from my comfort zone, all thanks to Stacy. Stacy is the polar opposite of me. Bold, carefree, and always up for a challenge. She has this infectious energy that can persuade anyone to step out of their shell. And that day, she had set her sights on me. Come on, Luke, it'll be fun and I really need your help, she insisted, her eyes sparkling with excitement and mischief. The idea was ludicrous, at least to me. Me cross-dressing for a photo shoot? I could hardly tie a tie, let alone navigate the complexities of women's fashion. But Stacy, with her persuasive charm, had a counter-argument for every excuse I threw at her. It's just for a day, and no one will recognize you, she said, laughing off my concerns. Besides, it's a throwback to the early 2000s. It'll be nostalgic. Before I knew it, I found myself in a studio that looked like it had jumped straight out of a time machine. The walls were plastered with posters of pop stars and movie icons from the early 2000s, and racks of clothes in vibrant colors and varied textures lined the room. The air was thick with the scent of hairspray and perfume, and upbeat pop music played in the background, setting the mood for a day of time-traveling fashion. So there we were, Stacy buzzing around the studio, prepping me for what was undoubtedly going to be one of the most unforgettable experiences of my life. She flitted from rack to rack, selecting outfits with an expert eye, her enthusiasm undiminished by my obvious apprehension. Trust me, Luke, she said with a grin, you're going to look fabulous. Despite my reservations, I couldn't help but be drawn into the excitement of it all. The studio, with its vibrant energy and colorful array of early 2000s attire, seemed like a world away from my usual routine. And with Stacy at the helm, it felt like an adventure waiting to happen. Little did I know just how adventurous it would be. Clad in a tight-fitting pink sweater and a denim miniskirt, I couldn't believe the reflection in the mirror was me. Stacy had worked her magic, transforming me into someone I barely recognized. My hair, usually a simple, short style, was now hidden under a long, wavy wig, and my face was covered in makeup that highlighted my features in ways I never imagined possible. Look at you, Luke. Or should I say Lucy? Stacy giggled, using the name we had concocted for my alter ego. I managed a weak smile, still processing the surreal experience of seeing myself this way. Enter Tony, the photographer for the day. With his flamboyant flair and a bright, welcoming smile, he seemed like the epitome of creative energy. Ah, there's my star, he exclaimed as he approached, his eyes scanning me from head to toe. Stacy, darling, you've outdone yourself this time. His compliment, meant to reassure, only added to the whirlwind of emotions I was feeling. As Stacy prepared to leave for another shoot, she turned to me, her expression a mix of excitement and a touch of sympathy. You're going to do great, Luke. Tony's amazing, and I'll be back before you know it, she said, giving me a quick hug. I nodded, trying to muster confidence I didn't feel. With Stacy gone, the atmosphere seemed to shift. Tony's friendly demeanor remained, but now there was an undercurrent of professionalism as he guided me to the set. All right, Lucy, let's make some magic happen, he said, his tone a mix of encouragement and command. The studio lights were bright and hot, and as I stepped onto the set, I felt a wave of vulnerability wash over me. Tony started clicking away, his camera capturing every moment, every emotion. Beautiful, Lucy. Now give me a bit of a twist. Yes, just like that, he directed, his voice both soothing and authoritative. As I posed and turned following Tony's instructions, I couldn't help but feel a growing sense of discomfort. I was playing a part, yes, but the line between Luke and Lucy was blurring. Each click of the camera seemed to solidify this new identity I was portraying, and with Stacy not there to anchor me to reality, I felt adrift in a sea of confusion and unease. Yet amidst the whirl of lights and the constant click of the camera, a part of me was intrigued by the challenge. I was stepping into shoes I never thought I'd fill, playing a role that was worlds apart from my everyday life. It was daunting, yes, but also strangely exhilarating. Little did I know, the real challenge was yet to come. As the photoshoot progressed, 
I began to notice a subtle change in Tony's behavior. His once professional and encouraging comments started to carry a different tone, one that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. The studio, once vibrant and exciting, began to feel constricting and ominous. Tony's instructions became more personal and invasive. Let's see a bit more skin, Lucy, he suggested, his voice no longer just friendly but tinged with something else, something I couldn't quite place but instinctively recoiled from. He walked closer to me under the guise of adjusting my outfit, his fingers lingering a little too long on the fabric, brushing against my skin. The air in the room seemed to thicken, making it hard to breathe. The bright lights of the studio, once illuminating the space with clarity, now felt glaring and harsh, spotlighting my vulnerability. Tony's flamboyant persona had faded, replaced by a more calculating and intrusive presence. His smiles were no longer warm, but carried a predatory glint. I tried to remind myself of the role I was playing, thinking perhaps I was misreading the situation, overthinking his gestures and looks. But the discomfort in my gut grew stronger with each passing moment. His comments became more suggestive, and his once casual proximity felt threateningly close. Relax, Lucy. You're doing wonderfully, Tony murmured, his voice a whisper that belied the tension I felt. His camera was no longer just a tool for capturing images, but felt like an extension of his gaze, invasive and unrelenting. With each snap, I felt more exposed, not just physically, but as if he was peeling away layers of my persona, trying to reach something hidden beneath. The dynamic in the room had shifted palpably. The playful, creative atmosphere of the photo shoot was gone, replaced by a scenario that felt like a carefully laid trap. I was no longer just a friend helping out Stacy, I was the unwitting centerpiece in a scenario that felt increasingly out of my control. As Tony's behavior grew more overt, the reality of my situation became clearer. The unease I felt was not just in my mind, it was a response to the real and present danger I was in. I was alone, isolated with a man who saw me not as a person, but as an object to exploit. The realization hit me hard, a mix of fear, anger, and a desperate need to reclaim my agency in a situation that had spiraled far beyond what I had signed up for. The air in the studio seemed to grow heavier, each of Tony's clicks echoing like a countdown to an unknown end. His advances became more blatant, his eyes lingering on me with an intensity that felt like a physical weight. My nervous fidgeting with the hem of my sweater or the uncomfortable shifting from one foot to another seemed to embolden him, misinterpreted as signals of consent rather than expressions of my growing anxiety. Lucy, you're a natural at this, Tony praised, his words slithering into my ears as he moved closer, his camera momentarily forgotten. You don't need to be shy. Let's capture your beauty in its full glory. His suggestions, once veiled in professionalism, were now undisguised invitations laced with innuendo. I felt trapped, caught between the person I was pretending to be and the stark reality of my vulnerability. Tony, once a friendly and exuberant photographer, now loomed over me, a predator masked with a camera. His movements were deliberate, designed to intimidate and coerce, pushing the boundaries of my personal space and comfort. The transformation of the environment was complete. The studio, once a place of artistic expression, had turned into a stage for Tony's predatory game. The vibrant backdrops and fashionable props that surrounded us became mere witnesses to the unfolding drama of manipulation and fear. With each step he took towards me, my mind raced for a way out, but the options seemed limited, the doors to the studio as distant as a lifeline in a stormy sea. My role as Lucy felt like a cage, a persona that had unwittingly led me into a web of deceit and danger. The conflict within me escalated as I struggled to reconcile my need to escape with the fear of provoking an even more aggressive response from Tony. My heart pounded in my chest, a frantic drumbeat urging me to find a solution, to assert my boundaries and reclaim my sense of self from the charade that had turned into a nightmare. In that moment of intense turmoil, my identity as Luke, the person I truly was, became a beacon of strength. 
The realization of my predicament fueled a growing resolve to confront the situation, to not let the character of Lucy define my actions or dictate my fate. The escalating conflict was not just with Tony, but within myself, a battle to assert my dignity and autonomy against the encroaching shadows of objectification and fear. As I navigated the increasingly uncomfortable situation with Tony, a startling revelation hit me like a cold wave. During a momentary pause in the shoot, Tony offhandedly mentioned Stacy, hinting at a familiarity with her that went beyond professional acquaintance. Stacy always knows how to pick them, he remarked with a sly grin, his words trailing off as if sharing an inside joke I was not privy to. This offhand comment ignited a spark of suspicion in my mind. Could Stacy have known about Tony's predatory tendencies? The thought sent a chill down my spine, mingling with the fear and discomfort that had been building up. The possibility that Stacy, whom I considered a friend, might have willingly put me in this vulnerable position for her own convenience was both shocking and hurtful. My mind raced, piecing together past conversations and Stacy's eagerness to get me involved in the photo shoot. Had there been signs I overlooked? Was her carefree attitude a mask for indifference to my well-being? The question swirled in my head, intensifying the sense of betrayal. Feeling used and exposed, my emotions swayed between vulnerability and rising anger. The trust I had placed in Stacy was now tainted with doubt, and my professional engagement with Tony turned into a personal battleground. Every suggestive comment and invasive gesture from Tony now felt like a double betrayal, one that was orchestrated by someone I trusted. The turning point came when I decided that I couldn't let this situation define me. I was not just a passive participant in their game. The vulnerability I felt was real, but it did not make me powerless. My anger and sense of betrayal, rather than weakening me, fueled a newfound resolve. I knew I had to confront the situation head on, to reclaim control not just over my body and my choices, but also over the narrative of the day. The photo shoot, meant to be a simple act of friendship turned professional engagement, had morphed into a personal crisis. But within that crisis lay the opportunity for assertion and transformation. The realization empowered me, lending clarity to my thoughts and actions. No longer just an unwitting subject of Tony's lens, or a pawn in Stacy's plans, I felt a surge of self-assertion. I was ready to face the challenges head on, to navigate the complexities of the situation with a clear mind and a firm resolve. The turning point was not just about confronting Tony or Stacy, it was about reclaiming my story, my dignity, and my autonomy. In the midst of the escalating tension, a chilling thought crept into my mind, growing louder with each of Tony's invasive gestures, could Stacy have known about Tony's predatory nature? The pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place, each one a painful revelation of betrayal. As I navigated the treacherous waters of Tony's advances, memories of Stacy's nonchalant departure and her vague endorsements of Tony replayed in my mind. Her words, once casual and reassuring, now echoed with a sinister undertone. The realization hit me like a wave of ice-cold water. Stacy had left me here, not out of trust, but out of disregard for my safety. The feelings of vulnerability and anger intertwined, forming a tight knot in my stomach. I felt used, a mere pawn in whatever game Stacy and Tony were playing. The trust I had placed in my friend shattered, leaving a raw, open wound. But within that turmoil, a spark of determination ignited. I couldn't change what had already happened, but I had control over what would happen next. It was time to reclaim my power, to stand up not just to Tony, but to Stacy as well. With each breath, I gathered my resolve, my fear and vulnerability slowly transforming into strength. When Tony reached out to touch me again, I stepped back, not with hesitation, but with newfound assertiveness. Enough, Tony, I said, my voice steady despite the storm of emotions inside me. This shoot is over. The surprise in Tony's eyes was satisfying, but I wasn't done yet. I collected my belongings, my movements deliberate and empowered. As I left the studio, the weight of the costume felt lighter. It was no longer a disguise, but a symbol of the role I had played and conquered. Confronting Stacy was the next chapter. 
When I found her, the words poured out, not just of anger, but of deep-seated betrayal. Stacy's initial attempts to dismiss my accusations faltered under the weight of my conviction. The confrontation was not just about what had happened in the studio, but about respect, trust, and the value of our friendship. The conclusion of this ordeal was not a dramatic showdown, but a quiet acknowledgement of the complex layers of our relationships. I had faced my fears, stood up for myself, and in doing so, found a deeper understanding of my own strength and resilience. Reflecting on the experience, I realized that the journey through vulnerability and betrayal led to a stronger sense of self. Trust and friendship, I learned, are not just given, but are tested and forged in the fires of adversity. This chapter of my life, unexpected and tumultuous, taught me that the roles we play, willingly or otherwise, shape not just the narrative of our lives, but the core of who we are and who we choose to become.